Borda and the School. This week's assembly is focusing on Black History Month. Black History Month is all about promoting the knowledge of black history, promoting equality and showing us other role models. In the United Kingdom, we have celebrated Black History Month every October since 1987. Sadly, in the past, people were treated differently because of the colour of their skin. They didn't have the same rights as others, such as school, medicine, work, and were not allowed to participate in, in certain activities like the beach and cinemas, and were not seen as equal, which I know you all agree it was just terrible. Rosa Parks and Nelson Mandela were incredibly brave people who stood up against those who judged people based on the colour of their skin, fighting for equality. Rosa Parks was born in America, and as a child she was used to being segregated from other children just because of the colour of her skin. She had to sit in different waiting rooms and even had to walk to school because her school bus wouldn't allow black children to ride on it. On the 1st of December 1955, at 42 years old, Rosa was told to give up her seat to a white passenger. However, she refused and was arrested. She is seen as a role model for her courage in the face of racism. She was prepared to sacrifice everything because she believed in equality. Nelson Mandela lived and was brought up in South Africa. He directed peaceful, non-violent protests against the South African government and its racist policies. He performed a political party called the ANC who wanted to fight for freedom. He helped to get rid of the segregation in South Africa and didn't give up even though he was also arrested for his fight to freedom. He later, he later became the president of South Africa. Can you identify the following famous people? He fought for freedom and racial equality in America. He won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. He died on April the 4th, 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee. He had a dream that one day little black boys and girls would be able to join hands with little white boys and girls. That was Martin Luther King. His father is from Kenya and his mother is from Kansas. He was born in Hawaii on August 4th, 1961. He became the 44th American president on November 4th, 2008. He is the first African-American president in the USA. The answer is Barack Obama. Next, when he was nine months old, his dad sawed off a golf club to make it very short so he could strike the ball into the net. When he was 18 months old, he began going to the golf course with his dad. One of the most successful golfers in history, when in the Masters Tournament four times, the US Open three times, the PGA Championship four times, and the British Open three times. He is sponsored by Nike. The answer is Tiger Woods. Next, born in Mozambique with Portuguese heritage, she moved to Wrexham in 2001. A determined community activist, she is dedicated to providing voluntary assistance not only to the 2,000 strong Portuguese speaking community in Wrexham, but also to other language and ethnic minority communities in the area. She has campaigned for BAME people to have better access to reporting racist incidents and hate crime in North Wales, and is a third sector partnership council representative for Race Council Cymru. She is an elected councillor for the Portuguese communities in the UK and Ireland, and chairs the Black History Month North Wales Committee. The answer is Yolanda Banu Vegas. She's a famous actress. She played Storm in X-Men and was a lead actress in Catwoman. She was a voice in Cappy in the film Robots and she was the first African-American to win the Best Ash Actress Award at the Oscars. That was Halle Barry. You know of lots of talented black and Asian people, so who is your inspiration? One such place is Acton Park in Wrexham, which was home to the Cunliffe family until the early 20th century. The Cunliffes made their money in 18th century Liverpool 
by operating a profitable trade in slaves, tobacco, sugar, rum and manufactured goods. Foster, Cunliffe & Co. owned 26 ships, including four slave ships working the triangular trade between Africa, the West Indies, British North America and Britain. Industry in the 18th century Wales continued to get, gain new markets because of the slave trade. They were used in Greenfield Valley in Hollywell, by, to, which were used to buy slaves in Africa and the Pennants. A family from Flincher who ran a very popular profitable plantation business in Jamaica were able to spend the profits on developing the Penhurst State Quarries and Building Penhurst Castle. Over in Bersham, the ironworks produced the sugar rolls that the plantation owners in the Caribbean needed to crush their sugar cane. As a result of the links between North Wales and the slave trade, research has shown that black people begin to appear in Welsh parish registers from the 17th century onwards and by the 1770s, it is thought that around 15,000 black people were living in Britain. Black people in Wales during this period were often servants to wealthy Welsh families. Perhaps the most famous of these is John Mellor's Coach Boy, the subject of a famous painting which hangs in Erddig and is thought to depict a black horn player and servant of John Mellor, who lived at Erddig in the early 18th century. One woman has made it her business to now to know about the region's historic links with Africa is historian Miranda Hoffman, who lives in Ponty Blythe in, in Flintshire. In 2017, Miranda published her first book, Black Tudors, The Untold Story, in which she discovers the long forgotten records and remarkable stories of Africans who lived in Tudor English, England. When we think of the history of North Wales, we think of medieval castles, of mining, of Victorian seaside resorts, said Miranda, who read history at Christ Church, Oxford. In fact, the area also has a fasc fascinating black, black history from African servants in Georgian gentry households. On another level, the area is too close to Liverpool not to have links to slavery. North Wales families such as the Penance of Penhurst Castle made their money in Jamaica, while the Greenfield Valley factories made copper, copper for merchants to buy slaves with the processed slave-picked cotton. William Wilberforce, a British Member of Parliament, worked hard for many years to get laws passed to stop slavery with his final success in 1833 the Abolition of Slavery Act. The next clip will explain why the UK celebrates Black History Month in the UK. A 
Equality is important and our school and local global community will be, will be exploring this further this year. The video clip refers to not only just focusing on black history in one month, this year our community will be working together to review, develop and embed equality and diversity in the curriculum further. Our rights and responsibilities include to be safe, respected, to learn and to teach. Everyone is entitled to human rights, no matter what gender you are, where you come from, no matter what race you are, we are all equal. Even if we like different things, we are all equal. Black History Wales oversees a full year of activities and creative programme of events to showcase achievements and contributions made to Wales by individuals. You can check it out at www.bhmwales.org. We will end today's assembly with this, one reason why sharing difficult histories of slavery and colonialism is so important. A young black woman sings of freedom and happiness in the Grand Hall of Penryn Castle. Across the sea, you can hear the oceans roar. They're searching east, south, west for Eldorado. With a god pine to pacify guns as well, though. No sugar can taste sweet when you hear the cane from which it was beat so listen Across the sea, you can hear the oceans roar. Oh, praise See?